Hello and welcome to the Down Under Visa Q&A podcast series. Registered Migration Agent Jeff Harvey from Down Under Visa in Manila and Sun and Office Manager Jeremy Harvey discuss common problems which occur when applying for visas to Australia. In particular, those issues which affect Australian Filipina couples who are applying for partner visas, tourist visas and other visas applicable to couples and families who are wanting to migrate from the Philippines to Australia. We hope you enjoy and we hope you will go to our website which is www.downundervisa.com.au Please have a look, there's a lot of information there. There are blog articles and you can do a free visa assessment form and where we can see if we are able to help you to achieve your dream. Thank you and enjoy. We had been contacted by a client who was emailing us to find out what he needs to do as their relationship had broken down and he was ready to file a divorce. He was really unsure of his responsibilities and he didn't want to cause her any issue, but they had been separated for quite some time by that stage. Yes, it's a bit of a... um, It's a difficult issue and uh, the problem is people, men in particular, they end up feeling responsible, they end up feeling... They, they feel kind even even if the relationship's broken down and I guess they're forgetting that it's not absolutely within their power to make a decision like that. So they, they think, oh, look, I'll, 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 be, I'll be kind and I won't say anything because I want her to be able to, to remain in Australia. Um, yeah, pretty much like that, you'd say. Yeah, yeah, I think I believe they had a child together as well, and that was probably the main reason behind it. Well, yeah, that, I mean that in itself does make make it difficult. And look, the department will take that into account if there is a child of the relationship as to what they do. But it's a responsibility of any sponsor in in a partner visa situation where they you, you are required to let them know if the relationship has broken down um, because she's in Australia based on on that relationship existing and based on your sponsorship and you can only sponsor her if you are still in that relationship with her. So the responsible thing is to actually pass that one on to the department, that's a requirement, and leave it up to the department to uh, make a decision. Um, What's the other question they always ask when it comes to that? How do you contact them? Well, how how do you contact them? Yeah, well, that's that's just a simple matter of calling them up on the one three one double eight one number and uh, letting them know there, and they'll tell you what to do. But the other thing that comes up is, oh, I suppose, especially if things have gone badly and uh, they're they're bitter towards them, it's. Uh, how quickly can I get her out of the country or they'll throw her out now, won't they? And uh, um, you've heard a few of those, no doubt, over the, over time. Yes, yeah, so there's been a few shocking stories. He's sometimes some fairly bad stories and you can understand uh, them being vindictive, but in a situation like that, it's not up to them and basically once their job is to report that to the, part, to the department, they then back off. Uh, from that point onwards, the department won't discuss anything at all with them unless they've got a question. Uh, what will happen is up to them. It's not up to the, it's not up to the begrudging, begrudged, sorry, uh, sponsor. <laughs> it's again not in his power to uh, to have her tossed out of the country. It's uh, up to the department. Um, had had another fairly sad one. The, the other day, I won't go into too many details because if that client's listening, it'll still be a little bit, little bit raw. But uh, um, the the way it works is that while 
well, the visa is not permanent, so if that's a prospective marriage visa or if that is a temporary partner visa, she is still in Australia by the grace of that relationship existing. If the relationship ends, well, then you know that takes away her reason for being in Australia. Now, there are exceptions to that if there is domestic violence or if there's a child of the relationship or if the if the sponsor has has died we've we've had one of those recently sadly and uh, the department actually were very very good about the whole thing and how they treated uh, they treated them and she has her permanent visa now despite him having having passed on um but in a situation where if once that visa becomes permanent there's absolutely nothing that can be done now she is in Australia, she's allowed to remain in Australia. It's, it's a it's a permanent visa. Um, from that point on, if the relationship breaks down, well, the relationship has broken down. It's no longer a department matter at all. So uh, yeah, yes, marriage breakups. Yet yeah, they're an unpleasant old thing. Hear a few sad stories, don't we? Yeah, we do for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess one of the things that one of the things. I always advise people is that they don't rush into it because probably half the time when somebody says that's it, we've broken up, we want to pull the pin, it's over, get this cancelled, I say, come back and tell me in two weeks. Uh, I say less than, well actually more than half of them would come back after within two weeks and say look we've, we've sorted it out and the relationships have continued which is always a positive thing. So, yeah, if you're in that situation, think carefully, think about the amount of work you put in, the amount of effort, the amount of heart, the amount of emotion that's gone into it as, apart from the money you've spent and uh, think carefully before you toss it away. And what other client issues have we uh, seen come through lately? One we often have to deal with is being overly relaxed with the information that they're supplying to us. So for example, sometimes they may list that they've lived in one address their whole life, but then they've also lived, listed that they've worked and lived in another country without giving us any information about that. Yes, yes, we see a few of those those come through. They, you know, where have you, you know, what addresses have you had? Oh, well, I lived in Takrobarn and Lady for my entire life I've only had one address and by the way I worked in Kuwait for five years you're thinking they uh, they must have been rather clever getting backwards and forwards from uh, their home in Takroba to work in Kuwait every day and back um, yeah yes we see fun things like that don't we that's for sure another issue is when we need the travel history Again, when they're working overseas, they'll list it as one large period, for example, five years, with no individual trips listed. But then we later find out that they had been going home and visiting family for a few months, maybe every year, but it hasn't been included. Yes, and the end result of that is that if they put, if the question asks, so list all of your travels over the last over the last five years and you leave something out well in fact what it means is that that entire application has is full of false statements and false statements of course what do they lead to refusals absolutely they lose they lead to refusals they lead and lead to uh, lead to five year ba- uh, sorry three year bans which is uh, uh, which is a nasty old thing that can happen especially especially when it's well, it's. I mean, we, we we don't see too many where you could honestly say there, uh, people are trying to be fraudulent, but we see people just being that little bit too casual and too relaxed about the whole thing, wouldn't you say? That's correct. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the things is that they need to know where a person has resided because uh, if somebody has been in a country for more than 12 months well they need a police clearance for that for that time um, now they could assume that this has been left out because maybe in that the time that person has been in Dubai or wherever they've been 
going around robbing banks. They've been the, you know, the bank robber of Dubai, and uh, they've got this horrendous police record, and uh, they're trying to cover it up. So yeah, that that's part of the reason for the whole thing. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we, the department asks sometimes asks for some fairly odd things when it comes to applications, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yes, we often scratch our heads, thinking, why do they actually need to know this? Yes, yes. Why do they need to know whether you know, somebody's brother is married or never married or living in a de facto relationship? But the fact is, they ask for these things. They ask for details of siblings. They ask for. Uh, details of older children who really have absolutely nothing to do with the application, even older children of the sponsor. They do ask for these things, um, but, and you can't just be casual and decide for yourself that these things are not necessary because, uh, for whatever reason, they are the department. If they say jump, then the response is, How high, sir? So, uh, yes. Accuracy, that's what, we, that's what we need. This is why we ask our clients to take their time and be absolutely certain before they finalise their information. Yes, exactly right. We would prefer that they asked us a silly question. Sometimes they think it is a silly question. I had somebody asking me today about details that they were putting on their marriage licence and it seems that a helpful uncle was... Uh, could have got them into trouble so um, never a problem to ask there's no such thing as a silly question the silly thing is to not ask the question and be too casual about it because the departments are not known for being casual okay well thank you very much for all of that and we will uh, catch up with you next time <music> Thank you all for listening to the Down Under Visa Q&A podcast. We hope that you found this beneficial to you. If you'd like to find out more, please go to our website, which is www.downundervisa.com.au. You'll find a lot of beneficial articles. There are blog articles. And most importantly, please do one of our free visa assessments. It'll take you five minutes, and hopefully we can help you to achieve your dream.